Hello YouTube, WJ's Handy Dad here, and today we are going to restore this bicycle. So this bicycle was given to me for free, and it has a lot of problems. Number one, the front wheel is locked up. I think the brakes are locked up on it, but I haven't verified that. Number two, the back tire is flat and the uh, inner tube is destroyed. I tried to fill it with some slime and it just basically did nothing. Number three, there's a lot of rust on the chain that needs to be cleaned up. And then there's just some wear and tear on it. Some of it may not be worth worrying about, like the seat. It's got a rip over here. This looks like this fell on it. So some of this stuff I may not worry about, but I definitely want to get this at least to where somebody can ride it. My son W is growing like a weed and he has basically outgrown his bike. So I'm hoping that he can ride this one. Get the rear wheel off. We need to undo the brakes. Now we're lucky this one actually has a quick release here. Or not so quick release, but anyway. And that allows you to get the tire off loose in the nuts. Typically they just have to be loose, not removed. And then usually it'll just slide off. That'll give us the chance to remove the tire from the rim. In this case, it looks like it'll just basically pull off by hand. These come off easier with a socket than they do with a screwdriver. Putting those back on them so that don't lose the pieces, the washers, the screws, and so forth. I'm going to take this piece off and this piece off as well. Just basically loosen this cable here. Pull that crimp off of there to get it to feed out of there. But my plan is to soak this, this, and the chain in automatic transmission fluid, get all this rust off, get everything here where it's moving freely. So the problem I've run into, and that is that unlike a single speed bike, you can't just take the chain off. <laughs> it's connected through the frame here. So I'd either have to cut the frame or cut the chain, both of which defeat the purpose. I've got a bike book and uh, apparently some of these have like removable rivets in them. really amazing but just a little bit of transmission fluid does to the rust so hopefully you can see that's just you know a few seconds basically with the transmission fluid and it's already cleaned it up a ton if I can get it rigged up to where I can soak it 
overnight, I think it'll make a huge, huge difference. It may just require soaking a towel and wrapping it up and then putting like a plastic bag or some saran wrap or something over it. I'll figure something out. Take the piece that holds the seat on. Basically, you know, when you flip this and you just keep unscrewing, it'll eventually totally come off. So you just want to reassemble it so you don't lose the pieces or the order that they're in. And I'm just soaking that in transmission fluid. It was kind of rusty. And then I pulled the seat post out. And again, I'm just cleaning it with the transmission fluid, getting the rust off. And then I'll probably clean the top of the seat and put some 303 on it. So you see just a little bit of transmission fluid made a huge difference. The chain is now able to move. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on the front here. My bearings back. So it goes on this way. And then this piece wrapped around here. And I just had this bolt. I'm just going to finger tighten it for now so that. I can move it around and get it exactly positioned where I want it. And then with the chain straight, I'm going to put it around there. Fixing the brakes should be pretty easy. You just loosen this lock nut here. And that allows you to loosen the resistance on the brakes and then to uh, slide that out if you want to pull the brake completely away. Then taking the front tire off is a little different than the rear. Whereas the rear just loosened and slid off, the fronts have that little lock washer that fits in and keeps it on. So you gotta loosen them enough to get that washer pried out of there. So once you get that little washer pin out of there and the brakes are off, then it should just slide right out. See if I can pop that back in there, or that may have been another reason why the bike was free. When I let the air out of the tire, I was able to just squeeze that back in there. You see the tires got kind of a little split there. If it wouldn't have squeezed back in, it's basically a plastic tool called a tire lever that you kind of fish between here and forces it in, but with all the air out, it's pretty easy to maneuver. Get you a tire lever, or if you're like me, I can't find mine, so I'm just getting a car trim remover. But you basically want something plastic, not something metal. I suppose if you're really careful you could probably get away with a screwdriver but you just work it around until enough of it's over that you can pretty much do it by hand Let's see once you get about a quarter of it going, and then the rest of it goes real easy. So you are done if you're replacing the inner tube because you just fish it out. This is what I chose to replace the inner tube. It claims to be thicker and therefore more heavy duty. 
than a standard one. We will see if that holds true. You can obviously add slime to the inside of it if you want. There's obviously lots of other choices as well. You can buy the ones that have slime in them. Or my personal favorite, although they're really expensive compared to buying a air tube, is they sell one that's basically solid foam. And it's a little tricky to get installed, but obviously once you've got it installed, you never have a flat tire again. Uh, that's what I run on my bike, but uh, I'm gonna go with this just for this video. And uh, you know, if my son is popping tires left and right, I may have to break down and uh, get the solid one. So one trick I think helps is put a little bit of air in the inner tube. You know, it's it's soft. It's not it shows up as zero psi on the air gauge but that gives it some shape and uh, I think it makes it a little bit easier to uh, put this in. So I'm going to start where the valve is since that has to be there. Everything else doesn't matter exactly where it is. valve is where it has to be. You want to make sure that it goes straight through and not at an angle where it will cut eventually. And then just push the tire bead back over as much as you can by hand. So in this case, I was able to get the whole thing on without using the tire levers. Then we're just going to fill it back up to the proper inflation, which is usually around 30. You can always check and see if there's something labeled on the tire. And of course, just as I said, to do it about 30 on here, it says to do it 40 to 65. So I'm going to go ahead and put this at about 45 or 50 and uh, like I said always pays to look on your tire and see if it has an actual recommended inflation. Once you've replaced or repaired your inner tube tire or both, installation is just the reverse of removal. Fixing the brakes is going to be a little more challenging because we're going to have to get them adjusted. So we'll start by pulling them into place here. And tighten down the lock nut. If I'm lucky, the wheel spins freely and the brake will stop it. So, a road test will be required to actually make sure that the brake is operating the way you want it to. But the adjustment process is pretty straightforward. You loosen this nut and you pull to make the brakes more tight and let the cable out to let the, make them looser. And some of it is just personal preference on how grabby you want the brakes to be in the front. And uh, you know, as long as they're stopping the tire, it's your preference, you should be okay. I have a tool that actually goes around this cable and it, when you squeeze it, it spreads and pulls it tight. Uh, it certainly makes the job a little bit easier, but obviously you can just use a needle nose and just pull on it. Or like in the case that I just did now, I was able to just pull on it with my finger and get it tight enough. Front's done. 
All right, so the routing of the chain is around that way and then around that way and then it's going to go around the rear wheel so even though it looks probably like it's not in the right spot right now when you put the rear tire on this will go around that and it'll create the proper resistance I'm going to put this on on the table just because I don't have an extra set of hands you just want to make sure that that nut is on the outside there and then also same thing on the bottom and that way the chain here will go around the gears and then after that we will set everything up check how it's shifting make adjustments on the cable this was definitely one of the most confusing ones I've ever dealt with but I think I've finally got it all routed back correctly so the piece here is not the upper even though when it springs back together it's upper so this is actually the lower and this one is the upper and then around the uh, gears on the wheel so the chain comes in around 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 and we do it like that everything goes back together and I haven't taken it off the table yet but I'm guessing I can pedal so next step will be to adjust the tension here putting the wheel back on just requires you to make sure it's moving freely a bike like this you can move this around in certain spots turns the angle of the tire to where it rubs so you may need to play with it to get it straight get the brake back on you just have to fish that piece into there and the, there we go all right if you can't get it on then obviously you have to loosen up the brake cables this shows a good example of the uh, H and L screws you see them in there so those limit how far this can move so that gives you a really good visual of it right there so setting the front is just like setting the rear in the previous video I showed you how to set the rear so you put the chain on the smallest gear first gear and you basically line this up over first gear make sure your gear shifter is set into first gear and then you just pull the cable taut and tighten the lock nut against it if you have one of these tools it goes over the cable grabs it and it'll pull it for you if not you just pull this with your hand or some other tool just tighten that nut and when you've done that and you've already set the limit screws then as you shift it should shift gears now i say should because sometimes these front derailers just don't let you get all three gears they're really hard to uh, get them to work through all the gears so sometimes you got to compromise is what's most important for you me personally i like second and third gear more than first gear because i don't do a lot of steep uphill riding but uh, if you're doing that then you might want only first and second gear in any event hopefully you can get your derailleur to hit all three gears but i've seen them where they'll only do two no matter how much adjusting you do I'll just give a real quick overview of doing the rear gear so you put it on uh, first gear put the gear shifter in first gear pull this cable taut and tighten it again you can use this tool to pull it taut while you tighten it or 
just uh, you know anything to grab hold of this and pull it taut. So I hope this video was helpful. If it was, appreciate a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not a subscriber, and uh, please tell your friends. Thank you very much.